glad y'all tuned in. Mm, we about to get this show started. introduce Yoshima the genius and Dr. Clyde Winters, the godfather of research. What, 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 what up, though? What hey, up, hey, hey, what's happening, folks? <laughs> what's going on, Yoshima? The, I'm back. The, the, the. Genius. Ooh. Hey, thank you for that. Thank you for that. I'm I feel honored. I feel honored. And what's up? The 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 the, the, the Dr. Clyde whoop, whoop, whoop. Winters gotta chuck up the West on that for winters. You dig what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah, yeah. All the way from the H to the shot. You know what I'm talking about? So what's up, Dr. Clyde Winters in the Windy City? What's happening? Well, you got it uh, <laughs> you know my uh, my Arabic my Arabic is uh, kind of bad. I can't pronounce that that uh, name. Jules Super, what's up? What up, y'all? What up, though? What up, though? What's J up? What's up? JP, B1 for JP. Let's go. Yeah. Mission, mission. What's up, JP? Yeah, yeah. What's up? Yeah, yeah. What the fuck is that? What are you talking about? Oh, what's up? What's up? What's up? Let's get it. Yeah, yeah. Get that off. Get that off. Yeah. How you doing? Up, All dude? right. B1, B1, hold it down, B1. What's up? What's up? Hey, I see, I see y'all, man. Hey, I'm, I'm back, man. I'm back. I've uh, two weeks off. Had to handle up, man. And um, Dr. Clyde had to handle up, and I had to handle up. But I'm back on the den and now. So yeah, yeah, we in this, man. And we gonna talk about soul food today. What is soul food? I know y'all hear it like so food yeah 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 so that's what we're gonna talk about today dr clyde what's up what's up what's up i love that shirt man that, he supposed to be a little bit darker baby he <laughs> this is uh this is back when the blackhawks was winning you know okay <laughs> so that's the uh chicago uh chicago uh you know uh hockey team okay they, all right i got a black one a blue one and a gray one Cool, cool, cool. I love it, man. That, that thing look nice, man. I got to make you one. How you doing, uh, Jay Super? You know What's what I mean, up? man. Uh, I, I love, I love all, I love all your art, man. Cause you make, you make, you make a brother look like a player. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, brush it off for you. Brush it off. Let, let me. I, I'll brush I got, it. I would pop my color, but I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could pop it for you. Go, you go. Man, you know some of those. Uh, <laughs> You know, one of those you made, I was, I was thin. I said, damn, I ain't never been that thin in my life. <laughs> Hell. Hey, I, I made you uh, uh, put, put my body on yours, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. You know, but, uh, back in the day, back in the day, you know, you, back in the day, uh, you know, you, you, you wanted to be kind of uh, moderately built so that you could wear the, wear the uh, tight clothes, you know, wear the clothes, look, look sharp, mm. you know, and stuff like that. But again, you know, I mean, hey, uh, you, you got to deal with what you got to deal with. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I see everybody in the house today. Everybody want to know about some soul food. They better because it's good for the soul, baby. But, yeah. You know, I think back uh, in the original soul food back in the day, you know, back in the back in the then, you mm -hmm. had uh, neck bones, mm -hmm. feet, mm -hmm. hog mouths, mm -hmm. ah, mm -hmm. pigtails, ah. ah! <laughs> gizzards and the lady come on gizzards tripe i love Let's... gizzards though but... oh yeah gizzards go hard you, you, you eat tripe uh no I, I, we, I didn't eat tripe we uh we ate uh uh jack salmon jack salmon what is that oh uh, that that's a fish you mm. know you know you uh get it and you fry it in a pan mm. You know, I mean, uh, people got they they different types of soul food all over the place. Like mm. my father used to like to make hominy. 
hominy. That's the white. That's that's the white uh, little yeah. round. Okay, I never had that. Yeah, you know, well, you know them uh, Mississippi hummus. Mississippi. You know, everybody got their own stuff. Like uh, you guys down in uh, Texas and Louisiana, mm -hmm. you can have a, a different, you know, a different profile. I know uh, we were talking earlier, and uh, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of the a uh, lot of the foods is kind of messed up because of the pollution. Yes. Back in the day, uh, that soul food. I mean, back in the uh, 1950s and 60s, when you read mm -hmm. articles, they said that was the thing that made black people live so long, is that we had such a, a good diet, you know, a little, gre a little grease in the food, a little grease, a little meat, mainly a lot of vegetables, you know. Right. Okra. Ooh, I can eat a raw okra right now, just oh, a raw okra. Yes, sir. You know, uh, uh, the other day, me and my uh, my uh, grandson, my, my uh, son, his wife, and and uh and and her mother we were out eating dinner and uh and so then i wanted the side order of uh of uh fried okra i said what are you doing i said fried okra don't you eat fried okra no we don't eat fried okra you serious yeah they where are they from her family from arkansas oh my Ooh. son family my son uh wife his family from arkansas so did they try uh yeah they tried it a little bit but you know i mean hey that's just like uh green tomatoes Mm. Even my kids didn't like, you know, I, even today I try to find green tomatoes every now and then cooking for breakfast, you know. How do you cook a green tomato? I cook a green tomato where you, you slice them up, uh -huh. then you uh, put them in some, uh, you put them in some, uh, in some water, you know, wrench them off, all that type of stuff, mm -hmm. salt and pepper on them, mm -hmm. and uh, put cornmeal, you, you, uh, you, you, uh, you dip them in cornmeal. Dip them in cornmeal, okay. Yeah, and then have you dip them in cornmeal. Then you all put them into the uh, skillet and you fry them. I'll be right back. Let me go make that. Yeah, go ahead. Man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, hey, I didn't got hungry. Man. Right. I can dig it. I'm going to have to try that. I ain't never tried it. I heard of fried tomatoes and then I seen people fry it pickles. It, so it got to be green. Got to be green. Got you. You know, oh, if, they, yeah. if they red, they don't uh, come out good. I right. don't know, for some reason, hmm. I've been having this dream, because I know it's a dream, because I've been having this this, this thought of a meal that's, that's made with tomatoes, mm -hmm. but it's something that's filling. I don't know. It, it keeps it keeps, it keeps keeps driving me. It's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work it out. But uh, it's, it's, something, it's some dish that I want to make with some tomatoes. I don't know what it is, though, because you know what? Uh, you know, not in my baby dog gone. I got to do the cooking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to get down and dirty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to sweat. Yeah, yeah. It's time. How does she cook their food and stuff like that? How does she always have a different meal for us? It's a chemistry. It's, it's alchemy at its best. Yeah. Cooking is a science. And it has a lot to do with your energy. If the person that is cooking the meal lacks love and passion with the meal the meal will receive that same energy and it will come out like that it's got to cover in the soul i know you you cook a lot of meals around your house oh yeah oh yeah i got my own channel y'all check me out on uh tiktok i have a channel on there called yoshi eats and y'all can go with this magical journey with me and see how i Whenever I eat meat, the process that I use to uh, clean the meat, um, like if I get ground beef, I get the meat and I put it in water and vinegar. Oh. And I let that soak into the ground beef probably for probably like 15 to, 10 to 15 minutes. Then I drain it, drain the water out. But all the water don't leave from the meat. So what you have to do, you have to sprinkle salt on the top of it. And that salt will seek in and it would drain all the water out. Wow. And then if I want to make patties or something, then that's when I crack an egg and I will mix that in with the meat to actually have it to stick together. And then before I put them on the grill, I will do that, season them and put them, put the patties, separate patties and put it in the freezer. And then the freezer will make them harden. And then once it's hard, then I can fry it. Because if you put it in that water 
and let the vinegar go through it it'll separate the fat from the meat and you got to mix that back together again but i never trust their processor so i clean my meat like that i told my mother that my mother said boy i ain't never heard of nobody cleaning ground meat but i let her try it i made spaghetti so we tried the meat that she had with the blood that was still intact versus me taking out the blood and cleaning it the flavor was totally different mine it didn't it didn't bring you down it, it almost seemed like the iron in the blood uh when you cook it it kind of make you kind of drowsy you see what i'm saying and when i take that out my wife can even tell you it, it makes you feel lighter you can eat a little bit more it it, it feels like eating a salad or something <laughs> So when you when you're cooking, mm -hmm. you, you really try you really try to put your soul into it. You really try to try to put your love into it. Yes, you know, I, you know I do. That's, uh, that, that's that's very good, man. That's, that's yes. a good thing to do because see, I'm I'm fixated when I like to cook. Mm -hmm. I like I like I like if I'm cooking something, and and it's got any vegetables in it, I want the vegetables vegetables to be green and red. I mm. want to be green and green and red, green or red, uh, green pepper. You know, maybe a little salary. The but colors. I like those colors. I like I the like colors. Them. So you you're doing art. I I, I think so. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's art. Yeah, yeah. It, it, hey, if it look good, it smell good. That mother sucker better taste good, right? You yeah. done did all that work. Yeah. <laughs> hey, presentation is everything. It, it's like your eyes will see it, and your heart like, mmm, that looks delicious. What's up, Karen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see Karen in the house, man. What's up? What's B1. up? B1, baby. B1 all day, every day, man. We in here. We in here. Good to see y'all. Good to see y'all. No, but, uh, but, but, uh, but that soul in the food, that, that creativeness, that, that touch of, that touch of, um, that touch of spirit. What, what made you, uh, what made you start uh, doing TikTok videos, uh, to, 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 to demonstrate your, your, your love of, uh, food? Great question. It started with a friend of mine named Rich J. Yella. And Rich J. Yella, he was like, hey, man, everything that you do, you need to share. He said, because, dude, you cook, you work on your car, so you a mechanic, you do carpentry work, you put floors, you do tiles, you do uh, drywall, you do all this stuff, dude, and you, you do music, you rap, you make beats. You even do the videos and you play instrument. Come on, man. Record that stuff. So he said, you got to start somewhere. And I remember I was in my in, in, in a, a rough place in my life. We stayed in this. We call it Nightmare on Am Street. And um, it, it was rough. Like we stayed in this apartment, man. And, and, and in this apartment, instead of you have an apartment manager, we had a landlord. This dude still call himself a landlord. So, um, uh, shout out to him. Uh, you know, uh, we love from you, and and you can keep your land. That horrible place. But when uh, you was an adult or, or a kid with your mom, was that when you were an adult? And no, nah, this when I was an adult with my wife and my son. Okay. And in this apartment, we moved into it. It we had no choice. It had fleas already in it. It had roaches. It had it had every thing you can think of but um at this time my friend encouraged me i didn't want to get on 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 live and show nobody that kitchen man but if you look at my old tiktok videos you'll see me in that kitchen and i'm whipping up the best meals i can in that horrible place um he started me on that journey of showing and what the more i showed I noticed that people was like, man, that look good. Man, I ain't never seen nobody do that. Wow, that sounds delicious. And I was like, okay, I guess my food do go hard. Well, my mother liked my food. My uncle liked my food. My cousins like it. My cousins used to uh, have me cook for them in order to play Street Fighter. Uh, so when I was a kid, eight years old, I wanted to play the video game. He will say, hey, go in there and cook some French toast, and I'll let you play the game. Oh. And I say, damn, okay. What, what do you, what's your specialty with your French toast? It must be something. <laughs> what, what, what do you, 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 what do
that that uh the, the presentation food, gotcha I'm thinking about food is presentation yeah it is and i was taught by his mother on uh she taught me how to cook an omelet she said if you know if you learn how to master the egg you can master anything oh wow and uh she said here and w when you know how to cook a regular egg you know just on the skillet then you boil the egg then she say if you know how to cook an omelet then you mastered the egg and she showed me presentation and i start learning area i start looking at um uh, uh food channels and the food channels then did not make me hungry. They inspired me. Now they make me hungry. I cannot watch a food channel if I'm not eating. It's just, I, it don't do the trick. Um, I can't even learn. But um, I watched a couple of food channels. What's up? What do you made the difference? You said at, fir at first they inspired you. Now they make you what, what What do you think made the, makes the difference today? Good question. I think today... I really don't know, man. That's a good question. I don't know. I when I look at it now, I think it's because I can purchase it, and because I have to have patience enough to watch it right there and feel that hunger, and knowing that it, I, I can go out later and get it versus when I used to watch it. I knew I couldn't grab none of that stuff, so I just watched it and soaked it in. Now, when I watch it, I'm like, I can go to the store and get that right now, but I need to watch it all the way through. But I'm hungry while I'm watching it. Damn, that looks delicious. And it's in 4K. God, I could just reach in that screen and just grab. Oh, but no, I, I don't have a barbecue pit. Dang, I got to go put the... Oh, I got to... Man, this is so far-fetched, but I just want it all right babe do we got some extra bread to go uh go to uh the, the barbecue joint to go get what i'm seeing on tv you see now it's a little different but look <laughs> let me let me go back to the french toast um french toast bread regular loaf of bread mm -hmm. you know and um i get the egg and i whip i, I whip the egg up and put cinnamon some sugar. Oh wow! And I whip that up, whip that up on a skillet. I and I put like a dab of nutmeg. Sometime I remember I used to do that, but mainly the sugar and the cinnamon would do it. And then I get that skillet and put some butter in there. And then I put that toast in there and flip that bread. I flip it on both sides with the um, the butter, right? Uh -huh. And then I let it. It like soon as before it start cooking. Like right when it's like getting a little warm, the bread is still, you know, loose. I dip it in that, that uh, egg batter and I dip it in there, flip it on both sides and I put it on the skillet and then I flip it over and then I dip it in there again. And when I dip it in there this time, I'm pushing that bread in there so it can soak up all the, the egg. And when it soaks up all the egg, then I cut the stove down um like lower than medium rear medium low and i put that up on that stove and i let it slow cook and then that thing is just a egg and sugary sweet cinnamon toast mother mm. Ooh, and then it yeah. it gets real fluffy it get real fluffy Ooh. right so it gets thick that egg make that one thing that one bread real thick and heavy and you get that and you put that on a plate and cut it up and then my cousin used to eat that with syrup maple syrup and go hard so the, yeah that was my key to playing street fighter so shout out to my kinfolk uh if it wasn't for him um and his mother i wouldn't be in the kitchen how i am right now and showing my love to everybody so yeah check me out on that tiktok what we got here you know create so far i said fba food yeah Fine. Yeah, that a good way to look at diet, especially considering how second frequency has corrupted nutrition through the industrial revolution. Let's right. go back to natural food as much as possible. You know, uh, create so far. I wish we could do that, but they they just put so much in. Uh, they put so much chemicals in it. You know. Oh you know, yeah, yeah. The reason I, you know, yeah. the reason I, you know, when when you make when you make that French toast. 
Yeah. Do you, do you put the sugar and, and cinnamon in the eggs or do you? In the eggs, yeah. I put it in the eggs. So that that's actually in the batter itself that I mix okay. it with. And then, that you know, once that come out, then that's when you put that syrup on top. Just to, a lot of sugar. a lot. It, you know, I wouldn't eat it nowadays, me personally, because that's a lot of, yeah, that's a lot of sweetness, man. <laughs> I got to have a sweet tooth. I know a lot of I know I know you said a lot of things you don't like to do because you don't want to give your son bad habits. But yeah, it's, it's for my son. It's not necessarily for me. If if I, I I gave up living for me to live for him, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, because if I live for me, I, I kind of do what I want to do. I don't do what I need to do. Sometimes I do what I want to do. Uh, when I live for my son. I do what I need to do. So I kick a lot of the habits. And I love that you that that um, uh, create so far say um, we need to go back to natural foods as much as possible. And that's absolutely true. Um, the basics of food. So we all know how a lot of us don't know how bread is made or, or the elements that it takes to put together. A lot of us don't know what it takes to make an omelet. Yeah. A lot of us don't know what it takes to make a French toast. But when you grab this element, that element, that element, that element, and mix them together, and you compose something, and you build something, and you present it to someone, and their reaction to you is, Mmm, can I have some more, please? And you're like, Yes, I would love to whip up another batch rather than you give somebody something and they tell you what's wrong with it all the time and they're never satisfied. And that's the reason why my uncle never went into the business of cooking because he said, I love to cook, but sometimes I don't like people reactions. What do you because mean that? he put his heart into it. You know, think about it. You put your soul into creating something. I can even say it with art. You put your, your all into creating this masterpiece. Like my son made this. He put his everything into making this masterpiece for me. Yeah. Right? Now, if this wasn't my son's piece and he presented this to a stranger, they may joke at them and say what the hell but then i know what it took to make this i know what it took to make this i know that he had to color this because i put myself in his position and i said man what it took to get here now some people just can't cook i mean a, a person could be in the kitchen for god darn me four hours all like they day and come out with some slop i mean that's them not following instructions in cooking like chemistry you have instructions to follow. In this instructions is your recipe. Your grandmother gave you the recipe. Her mother gave her the recipe and so forth. Everyone passed down this recipe, right? Yeah. You get the recipe and the recipe don't have no measurements on it. Because it ain't that they did it intentionally. It's just you make it to taste. You have to make this recipe become you. You have to embody this recipe. It's like a formula. I can tell you the formula G I J comma J equals zero, but if you don't feel it, then the formula is kind of like what the heck, you know. So with that recipe, you you work at it. You put a pinch of this, you put a dab. You know the ingredients, and you know what it has to come out to be. So just like the cornbread, the hot water cornbread. I remember you asked about that and you, you spoke about how you want that recipe. That day when you said that, I went and did a TikTok video on how to make hot water cornbread, right? And I don't yeah, have the... It to me. You I do. To me. I do. And I don't have the... All I know is the ingredients. I didn't have the measurements. But I knew in my soul what it's supposed to look like and what it tastes like. Yeah. So, have you ever smelt something and you can taste it? Yeah. 
You can you smell collard greens and your mouth start watering. You smell that cornbread and you like, mm, man, I could I could taste that right now. And that that goes with me. So smell and taste go hand in hand in visual. So when I watch my grandmother cook the hot water cornbread, I put two and two together. I said, all right, hot water cornbread. All right, it's going to take hot water and some cornbread. And then you get that skillet and you got to put some grease in that sucker. You got to put some oil in that sucker because you know it got to fry. Hmm. You know, how you doing, uh, Brad? Mary, Dora. Peace, Dora, peace. Brian. Dora Bell. Today, I, I, was, uh, I was at the, uh, I was at the uh, store the other day. Yeah. And, and, and they, don't, they don't look like, they look like the oatmeal is, you know, the. Uh, it's the different. Oatmeal is different and, it's different. I don't, I don't. Does that affect how you cook your stuff? Now? It does. It does. Um, it different. My it, it does. It affects it. So my grandmother, um, you know, rest her soul. I love her. So Willie May, Willie May, uh, taught me that she would get a tomato, and she'll taste the tomato and say, "Man, these tomatoes ain't no count." I say, what, what she mean by that? She'll get an onion. She'll cut it, smell it. She'll say, I'm not tearing up. This, 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 this onion ain't no count. Meaning, you know it ain't no count mean, right, Baba? Yeah. Yeah, it, it don't even add up. So you can get two tomatoes and it ain't no count. What's up, James? Edward? Yeah, G.I.J. Comma J. Evening to you as well. Peace. I say, oh. Yeah, yeah. Good guy at not there, man. For me. Yeah, yeah, we in there. It. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So, yeah. So, and no count. So, what my mother in, in, in the early 2000s, what a lot of families end up doing is putting MSG on their foods. Hmm. Monosodium glutenite, right? So they will sprinkle me. They'll say, sprinkle me, man, sprinkle me. And what that does, it tricks the tongue into making believe that the food tastes good, but we say it's enhancing the flavors. So my grandmother put so much MSG in her stuff to make it get that, uh, and if my grandmother lived long enough, to go get organic tomatoes, organic potatoes, uh, stuff with substance nowadays. I think that she she'll be proud of my cooking because it it tastes like back in the day. You but gotta can, go go ahead. Can you be sure all the time? I know <clears throat> a lot of these places have organic this, organic that. You know, mm, maybe good cause, point. maybe maybe because I don't cook as much as maybe if I would have kept cooking, but I stopped when I got married. Then now, then after my wife died, I went back. Do do you do you do you get a different taste? Have you ever yes. have you ever tried to do a, a taste test with yes with the, mm -hmm. with the organic and the other? Okay, what was the results? The results is the organic has a lot more flavor, and it it actually dies quicker, like real fruit, real vegetables. You really got to take care of uh, of organic. If you look in my refrigerator, I got cilantro. In a, uh, uh, a glass container with a little bit of water in the shot glass. Let's be honest. A shot glass. I put the cilantro on that and I put a little bag on top of it. Um, the freshness of it. So the tomatoes have a, a different flavor. My wife can even tell you. You know, uh, just like uh, uh, distilled water versus sink water, uh, faucet water. Uh, when I met my wife, she couldn't tell the difference. When I got with her and showed her the difference between sink water or purified water versus distilled water that steamed, um, she started tasting a difference. Wow. And um, we can go back to the food with the organic. Organic, it has to have a certified stamp. It can't just say organic on it without that stamp. And what that stamp is, so let's say, for instance, you buy some organic um, uh, onions. And the onions for organic is going to cost a little bit more. 
And you say, man, I ain't spending all that for that. Well, the thing is they're regulated. They have regulations on a pesticide. So to be organic, there's a limit amount of pesticide you can put on the, on the plants, on the plants. And it's controlled. Non-organic, they can put however much they want on there to keep the bugs away. And you can taste the difference. So when I go to um, Sprouts, I go to Sprouts. And I buy the food from Sprouts. I bring it home. It hit different. Because I wake up every day in a fast. Meaning I control what I eat and how I eat. And the, nutri the nutritional value of it on what I partake. I can feel every plant, every food that I eat. Mm -hmm. I, I was telling you earlier that I eat um, fresh um, okra. I wash it off, peel that little top off, and consume fresh okra. Not cooked at all. Um, I can feel it. I instead of drinking coffee, I drink uh, they call it mud coffee. It's um, with mushrooms in it, mushroom based. Do it give me energy? Yes, it does. It makes me feel good. No caffeine. You grind up your own. So you grind up your mushrooms then. No, I don't. I actually buy it. I, I would love to get some fresh mushrooms and grind it up and do that. You know, I haven't got all the way self-sufficient just yet, but I'm doing my best. And doing your best is having your family on code, too, because it's very hard to wake up in the morning and you grew up to eating bacon in the morning to not eating none of that and smelling it anyway and being as strong as you is saying i ain't gonna i'm not gonna obey my stomach you know i'm gonna stay away from that stuff you know and you smell it um that's one of the things that you know what's up tons five that's one of the things that growing up and making that transition i had to kind of cope with yeah, yeah it's, it's you it's hard to do it you can do it on your own but when I tell you that takes um, uh, courage, it takes obedience. Um, it it basically takes obedience, being obedient, and it, it takes a lot of um, you have to you you can't work in chaos. You can't you have to work in order. And like I told you before, I had I wasn't living for me. I was living for my son. So. When I seen what, uh, let me close this door. I got uh, nanobites flying through here. Uh, what it is, is living for my son, knowing the, the risk of colors, dyes in your food. You know, uh, red, 40, yellow, 5, uh, blue, whatever the god darn numbers and, and letters that they put before it. Yeah, self-discipline. Being, dis being obedient to who you are you know, and what your body need what's up but you know you you, you but, but we always had those great memories like i used to love to go to my grandma's house because she was poor the hell out of me yeah you just put stuff and it would just melt in your mouth and jp she said my grandma's yeah. from arkansas and she cooked so much you know we used to live with her when we were younger great memories of soul food it's, it's so great cool. memories they it's to, memories. They used to put that extra touch in it. There you and go. What, what, what I'm seeing from you, what I'm hearing mm -hmm. from you is that you're able to still, you're able to, to still be able to, to take that emotion. Yes. Yes. Take those feelings from the food and, and you're able to translate. You know, back in the day when I was growing up, every, every uh, summer my father would, would rent, would rent a plot of land out in, out in the uh, suburbs, mm -hmm. you know, and he would grow okra, tomato. He would grow the three, the three sisters: corn, squash, mm -hmm. tomato, mm -hmm. okra, and uh, and and beans. You know. And so then we would have the whole summer. We would have fresh food. Then my mother, she would can a lot of the stuff. You know, people nowadays, I don't even know how to can. You know, we would can a lot of the stuff. You know. And what was she canning it with? Like with the with vinegar or something? Like because they had to preserve. She would boil the stuff. She would make a lot of dumplings. She would do a lot of oh. dumplings. And she would okay. put them in, and she would can it in jars. You know, back in the day, you could buy these jars. 
and you could can your food. My father used to like to, to can his peppers. He used to like hot stuff. Mm. I, I really, I, you know, he said, he's, my mama said he was from Mississippi, but he ate like he was from uh, from Mexico or Japan or something. He liked this stuff real hot, you know. Mm. And uh, but, but the thing is, this is that, so we used to have a lot of fresh food, you know, fresh uh, vegetables over the summer. Then we'd have, uh, you know, uh, canned squash, canned tomatoes, you know, canned beans. And then, you know, you used to could buy the jars and then you could can your own stuff. But again, but again, those are lost arts. I didn't ever watch my mom That's see what she was doing. You know, I was just, I was just there to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Dor Doravel made a point. I'm young. I'm uh, 38. So it said the organic fruits don't taste the same after C-19. All right. Um, what, is that? what is that? Uh, well... I don't know if Doravel can explain because uh, what I'm thinking is this. I don't know what a real tomato actually tastes like, let alone do I know what a real chicken actually tastes like. Because my grandmother tell me it don't taste the same. And she used to say, you never, oh, COVID-19. Oh, yeah. And she used to say, you never, um... You would never know what a real tomato and an onion tastes like, boy. And I would be like, eh, really? She said, man, back in the day, you used to get a chicken bone and make a whole soup with it. Yeah. Now, chicken bones ain't no count. Ain't no count at all. The chicken ain't no count. So, um, uh, uh, well, the thing with COVID-19, um, I, I don't know what to say after that. I don't know if you got that shot, then it may mess up them taste buds, man. But uh, my taste buds still good, even uh, before in COVID. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I do want to touch on this. Um, uh, you know, uh, some people, mm. a lot of people, um, you know, uh, I think one one of my kids said that that after they had caught COVID, you know, yeah, uh, they they had said that that afterwards that the stuff didn't kind of taste the same. No, you know, but, but to me, nothing. Nothing I eat nowadays. The poetry is not, nothing I eat nowadays tastes like it used to. I be I be trying to I be trying to trying to find stuff to get back that taste. It's cigarettes. If up. if you smoke cigarettes, uh -huh. your your taste buds ain't like the person who don't smoke cigarettes. So the person who cook that smokes cigarettes is not gonna be the same as a person that don't smoke cigarettes is mm -hmm. that alters your taste buds um bill gates brought up a lot of farmlands and he put chemicals in the um in the foods and um what it is is oh it's against the law if they uh mess with the organic uh, uh labels by the way yeah it's, that's against the law so if they mislabel it and they don't have that government stamp on it that's a lawsuit and them companies do not want to file they do not want to go through that because sally and jenny is waiting and karen is waiting um to collect money on behalf of the united states government and get rich from a lawsuit yeah so yeah they, they don't want to play with that a lot of them got in trouble by that yeah you but it's getting a lawyer though a lot of times you know for a case like that they want you to pay money Oh, yeah, you got to. But uh, the way how to counterattack that is put it on social media. Okay. Yeah, you put that on social media and let the world hear, just like with catalogs. The world put them on social media. What yeah. Snoop now was complaining about um, uh, not having his, his cereal uh, on the shelves, and he complained to social media. And a lot of these, these people are getting recognition by complaining to social media, but... You know, back to what Gates did, he brought up all the farms, Baba, and um, he brought up, uh, 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 what's that called, the um, vinegar, the apple cider vinegar com uh, company that I used to benefit from, and he brought, once he brought that company, the gnats don't even want that shit no more. What? So yeah, man, cause I used to, I used to, that was a goddamn nano net in here. I we we, we I live in a country, so they, they be coming in and out and shit. You know, these are these are hood gnats, man. They they different, man. They don't. Some of them bleed, some don't. I don't know what to say about these critters, 
but they don't even go towards the apple cider vinegar no more. And I notice a change um, in the ingredients, the apple cider vinegar. But I also know that what he's doing is detrimental to uh, FBA and B1. Uh, uh, you know, um, Yoshi, uh, Al Kaboom, Al Kaboom Land Man, What's what, up? About what he said, he said, JP, not only is the food on earth tampered with, yeah. but the fish in the sea are also poisoned. Oh, yeah. Remember those oil spills, dumping garbage in the water, plastic, et cetera, fish are breathing this garbage. You know, because uh, she has said that she likes to go to uh, to the fish. I don't right. know. Something got to something got to be good. I do know that in, in a lot of European countries, they won't they will not they they do not eat american food even in no it, yeah americans we don't care bible uh, uh in galveston i'm close by galveston right and um they did studies on our water they said man you drink that water man you may not come back hmm. you know what i'm saying because we call galveston a toilet bowl because the water just goes like this just keep going in a circle. It don't get circulated to Florida. Florida got clear waters. But Galveston? Man, look. Galveston to God darn me. Uh, uh, what is that called? Um, uh, Mexico. Over there in uh, Santa Fe or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Further down the coast. They waters are a little bit clearer than Galveston. Why is that? It's because the Gulf Coast is doing this. Right here in Galveston and uh, Louisiana. We get the nasty stuff. So, um, is it because of all the oil that they that you guys are are, are pumping up from under the ocean? You think absolutely, that? it it has a lot to do with everything. Good, great one because it's the oil. I lived on a boat for a month, and while I lived on that boat, we dumped all our food, all our trash in the ocean. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I'm guilty of that. You know what I mean? I was following orders. Uh, every boat did it. You throw all your waste in the ocean. The the uh, the dolphins go at go at it and they eat it. Um, our oceans have so much salt in it. Um, it it's messed up. That what he said. They'll never get all that oil out the ocean. Yeah, James Edward. Yeah, you absolutely. They they won't. You agree right. with them then, huh? Yeah, I do. All right. So Tons Five told me this. He said, "Man, they got a lake out there in Florida, right?" And he said the lake. It, 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 it was like clear water lake, right? Uh -huh. Very clear. He said, man, back in the 90s, man, it was good. People used to, you know, everybody go to it. Had, you know, it was clean and clear. But he said, do you know what is what it is now? I said, what is it? He said, it's full of sunscreen. Hmm. I said, what you mean? He said, well, think about it. Everybody come to the beach. They put on the sunscreen and they go in the water. So the sunscreen goes into the water into the, the lake so that lake is full of chemicals we are doing this shit unconsciously protecting our own self and we going out there and we harming stuff so the fish look pray over your food man f all that other stuff Pray over your food. You talk to your food. You tell it what the hell it's going to do. You don't let no one tell you what your food going to do for you. You tell it what it's going to do, but you got to be aware of what that food is doing. Okay. So, yeah, you can't be around that saying, man, I'm finna eat me a ham, bacon sandwich wrapped in jalapenos. And you think that you know goddamn well that ain't good. But if you're around that, you say, man, I'm finna get, you know, a steak. And I'm finna clean it and prep it. While you prepping it, you <laughs> you probably listening to some music, Baba. You probably jamming. You in a good vibe. You ain't around there saying, "Kill that mother, pop that trick, come up, eat that mother, pop that." Yeah, yeah. You, you ain't man. Your food gonna come out dangerous, man. You probably have diarrhea after that. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, even with the, the taqueria places, man, they around there listening to that sad Spanish music. Oh, my dear, I ain't no, I ain't no, no beans, I'm not black, no, me no negro, me no negro. So, yeah, they listening to that shit. Sometimes they fool kind of effed up, and, yeah, you got to run to that toilet, and you got to get rid of that bean dip. And then that, that old corn that they didn't put in there. So, yeah, it, the environment. 
But you know what Al, we got? Al Kabulan man says people in the golf are still being born with no hands, no feet, blind and still Damn. due to that oil spill. Ain't nothing safe unless you grow, grow your own food. That's no but, but you know, that's that's a good thought. That's a good thought, yes. Al Kabulan, just like me. Yes. You know, you can buy a house. You can buy a house. Like mm. my house, my house that I originally lived in in the city, I could do whatever I wanted to on my land. Oh yeah. When you move into certain neighborhoods, mm -hmm. you can't do everything you want with your land. And some places, your you have an agreement, you have a community agreement that you mineral can rights, grow plants. So yeah. it's it's not always that easy. No, it's, it's not. not always that easy, you know. And then you you got to have a green thumb sometime, man. I know some people say they like my mother. She she could kill a cactus, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, she don't have a green thumb. My grandmother, my grandmother can catch fish with spit on a hook. Wow! Make it make sense. It don't make sense. Once you throw it out there, the spit gone. But she don't even put bait on it and catch fish. My mother would put bait on it and a fish would eat it. And she'll come back empty-handed. But my grandmother with nothing, throw the rod out there, catch fish. I mean, it's your intentions, man. It, it has to be intentions. And I love how you said uh, you can uh, raise your own animals. So, all right, in Texas, we have farms and shit, right? And you can go to the farm and you can buy a whole chicken. That was an African dude that... um. Uh, shout out to uh, King Bishop with NSS Nigerian Su Supreme Squad up in Houston. And he um, showed me where this African guy was at, where he get, where the Africans in Houston get their meat. And they go to a live farm. It was a chicken and they had, he had chicken and goat. And uh, you go to the farm and you say, I want that one. And he'll go out there and capture it, break the neck cut the head off, put it in the, uh, the keel, burn the feathers off, scrape the feathers off, put it in a bag, then put it in a brown, put it in a, a clear bag, then wrap it up, and then put it in a brown paper bag and give it to them. And uh, that was a, I think that was $20 right there for a whole real live chicken. So he get the gizzards, the heart, you know, you could clean it up or do whatever you want with it. He cut the feet off. He asked you what you want. Head, feet off, gut it. All right, I'll do it. Total butcher. So his, that meat, I don't think King Bishop knew how to cook. Um, I'll say the King, uh, General Patai King Bishop, love you, brother. I see you up there. You're telling on him. You're telling Yeah, I'm telling him. I don't think King Bishop can cook, man. King Bishop, that chicken was tough, man. I don't know. But um, I tried to reach out to King Bishop uh, before he transcended, and uh, I tried to get the location to that place. Come to find out the African dude got bought out from some Chinese folks. Oh, wow. When I went to the Chinese folk uh, factory, it smelled like shit. And I didn't, and the chicken that I got had like little yellow spots. Like I guess they was like throwing the chicken up and hitting it and, you know, giving it. Bro I don't know what it was, but it was different than what the African did. So it's about how you handle the, the animals as well. Um, cool. Yeah. You know what, what you're telling me, what you're telling me, you know, Yoshi is that. That that cooking, the food you eat, the plants, the yes. animals, everything has to have some sort of soul in it. Or, it or, does. There's got to be some intimacy with it. Is, yeah. that, is that true? It's absolutely true. I think my mother, the reason why all the plants die, because she don't sing to them. My grandma used to sing. My grandma used to be in the kitchen. <laughs> And then when we walk in the kitchen, my grandma say, you start humming, huh? Then when we get closer to her, then she just go silent and say, what you in here doing, book ahead? Uh, I say, I'm just watching, just looking. Say, you hungry? Well, taste this. It ain't, it ain't no count, but taste it anyway. I tried. You let me know if it tastes good. So, grandma. yeah, you know, so it, it, it it's about the soul that you put and the soul is energy so your intentions you put some bad intentions some bad juju on your food they say never eat with your enemy right yeah never eat with your enemy especially don't eat what they what they cook but yeah i go to a, a fresh farm to get my eggs baba 
Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And, and if you go to a farm and get your eggs, you got to make sure it has a male in, in the camp, you know? What we got? You know, Al Kaboomland said they once sold the chickens at the market back in the day. Mm-hmm. Live turkeys, duck eggs, and real fresh yeah, vegetables, fresh vegetables. And fruits. Even they hog Even brain. egg, hog brains. Mixed with eggs back in the 50s. Wow. Good eating. I ain't never heard of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but they are, uh, they, you see, they, they talk about cow brains too, you know. Mm, but, but, right. but again, in a sense, is that, you know, is that, you know, Yoshi, hmm. you know, what, what, what you're telling me is that it's an intimacy. It's an it intimacy is. that, that has to be involved between not only, not only in a sense, the food that you're about to eat, but the food that you're about to cook. You have to have some intimacy. You have to, you have to kind of give it some sort of of a of of, of emotion, some sort of yeah. love. It, yes. Love, man. Yes, um, I know a farmer. Her animals are like so nice, man. They come up to you. I have a video. It's a Geiget video. If y'all check it out, it's like a demo video. And that video, I'm right next to a goat. That ain't CGI. I went on a farm and chilled with the goat. Uh oh. And um. The love that the animals have for the owner, and I asked her. I said, "Well, what do you do when you, you know, put one down?" And she said, well, "I never eat it." And I say, "How come?" She said, "No, I can't. I name them. I don't. I don't want to eat." But then, after further thought, deep thought into it, the animal would want her to eat it because the animal loved her. And will want to be shared and be a part of her. And she don't do that animal justice by not eating it. Yeah. Because she raised that animal, know what it been eating, know what it fed, know his children, know his mom, know his dad, know everything about him, or about the animal, and know, she don't eat it. But, but some, some, people, some people feel that, that, in, that in taking an animal's life, that you put trauma. You know, I, I mean, it's, it's how, I know I know they talk about a lot that, that when you go to these, uh, this, you know, we used to have the uh, the stockyards here in Chicago, mm-hmm. and then the stockyards they would you know put a bullet in, shoot a bullet into the calf or the or the pig. Right. And so what 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 about this whole idea that some people say that 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 the way the way the animal is put down can have an effect in terms of how that food is. Absolutely. I hear about that as well. But she, she goes to uh, HEB to get her meat. So I don't think that's part of her ideology on that note of um, of that. I I don't know why she don't eat her own animal. She, but she give it to somebody else and they get to eat that love. Um, <laughs> but, uh, how you put the animal down. Um, I know you know a lot about that with the hala meat. Um, how they they say they slit the throat or they puncture uh, the artery and let it bleed out, uh, not necessarily do what uh, in America we do. We send it to the slaughterhouse and they cut the heads off while the animal looking right at his cousin. Um, that's trauma. That that from what I know, from what I know on what these murderers do uh, a murderer a marauder a marauder yeah that's the word a marauder uh, a thief uh, uh, uh someone who you know what i mean but to y'all don't know thief Tell somebody pirate, pirates like pirates you yes around and just mm-hmm. you know, just, just steal stick up man. right stick up man yes so the we're gonna call these a group of people them the marauders and what they tend to do is they tend to take over businesses and they just go to the extreme with it you know um i worked in dumas texas in dumas texas i did uh i was a scaffold builder helper and we had to pass by a um uh, uh, slaughterhouse every day and the smell was bad it's uh if death smell like ass i guess that's what i was smelling it was a lot of that and uh they kill every day and then you can tell when the methane is released they release the methane and you will get it at our factory miles away and um i've never 
I don't know if I ever ate an animal that was uh, uh, killed or put down in a nice fashion, Bob. I don't know, man. So I, I don't I don't know how to have you. I, I, I come from Walmart and say yeah. Walmart. So I, <laughs> you know, I know they probably fucked him up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know, man. Hey, look, y'all leave in the comments. Have y'all ever ate, you know, some some good animals that haven't been? My father, <sighs> come on, man. Kid, my father mm. used to go hunt, hunting every uh, every fall. So you know, we'd uh, we'd eat uh, we'd eat squirrel and rabbit. You know, everything tastes like chicken. Mm. And uh, but but when that but uh, if you ever shot a possum, my mother my mother refused to cook possum. Mm. She, said, she said she wouldn't cook possum. Because uh, when she was growing up in Mississippi, they said possums ate dead people. Yeah. And you know, but possums, they eat it from the butt, they, right? You know, they eat a lot. You know, they're like a pig. They mm -hmm. can eat anything. You know? Anything. And so yeah. then, uh, so then uh, you know, we used to eat that rabbit, you see that squirrel. And like uh, when my father, sometimes he used to, you know, have me clean them. You know, I had to cut, had to cut around the, the feet and pull the skin off. Mm. Then you, then you cut them out, take out the, take out the guts. Mm. Put, them, put them in some uh, vest, put them in some onions, mm. green pepper. Let them sit a, sit a few hours. Get With the head out. still on, huh? With the head still on. Uh, no, you cut the head off. Oh, he did. He cut the head off, so it ain't looking at you at all. You just no, no, no. so you just seen the big old feet. You, you see the you see the head. You see the head while you cleaning them. But once mm. you take the skin off, and once you gut them, mm -hmm. once you take the uh, once you gut them, and then you cut the head off. Okay. Off. But you know, like, just like, but but then people are so different because you know, like, uh, I know a lot of. Uh, I was at this restaurant, me, uh, my son, when we was in that, uh, we was on the trip. My son and his wife, you know, they took me to this, uh, to this, uh, to this uh, 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 seafood restaurant. You know, uh -huh. eating there, and then that lady said, "Do you want any of the? Uh, I guess they called the, the crayfish or something." I said, "No." I said, "No." You had to work too much with them. To, to oh, oh, the, the crawfish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you got to get them, yeah. break them, yeah. and suck the ends. Come on, man. They do too much and peel it. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I was joking with them on that because you losing weight while you're gaining weight. Go ahead. <laughs> Those Louisiana people now, they, they like that stuff like that. They, they yeah, they do. They, they do. Not a seafood. It's the equivalent. Eating crawfish is the equivalent to eating sunflower seeds. Now, sunflower seeds, you're going to buy them with the shell on or you're going to buy them with the shell off. Yeah. When you buy them with the shell off, you notice that you're doing this. Yeah. When you have them with the shell on, it's with two or three in your mouth and you on the side and you break it and spit it off and bring the other one and... And then next thing you know, you got all these shells around you, and you gotta pick them up. <laughs> I used to, when I was teaching, man, I used to hate it. A lot of the, uh, a lot of kids would buy uh, they got sunflower seeds, and they bring them. Yeah, up and they be in their desk. <laughs> he's so nasty, you know. But uh, you know what, family, family, what we're gonna do is that uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna show a few commercials, then we're gonna come back, and then uh. Yoshi has a good presentation for you guys. So we'll do that uh, shortly. Peace. Y'all on the den and now. Den and now. Den. Never change, remain the same. My respect for nature and my brain. The Black American experience is the most traumatizing experience that any other human has ever experienced. ETSS, RBT, SIV, E68, HF, and RBF. Racial battle fatigue. How many times was my family will be? Cause they can't see. Slaughter us on camera. Offer us help. And I see a saying, Master, help. They never wanted the me, just wanted our wealth Lazy, pathetic, inbred Criminals, murderers, half dead Straight out the ice age On another masquerade With one purpose to divide and conquer Most of us come from a sunken place Shadow work will return us back in shape Back then, even now, they still a bet And I upgraded and I remain a best of best Can't keep us from thinking 
On the cool, we let they ship sinking. No religion, sex addiction, food addiction, death addiction, substance, self help addiction. So dreamy. Hey. I've just written a new book, History and Culture of the Black Aboriginals of America. Yes, yes, I've written a new book. This book is called History and Culture of Afro-Americans. It's about the Aboriginal Americans. It's about the first people who inhabited America. Many people don't know about our great culture, this super culture that we created, but I discussed this book. In 489 pages, you'll find out so much information, great information, about, in a sense, what uh, the Aboriginal Foundational Black Americans did. You're going to see in a sense that Black people contributed much here. When the first Europeans got here, that's what they found. Yes, they found Black Aboriginals inhabiting the Americas. It was the Black Aboriginals that built this country. This is why you had to get my book, get my book, History and Culture of the Aboriginal Blacks of the, the Americas. In this book, you will find out the truth. You will know what we created. You will know who we are. Get this book. Buy it now. works with this guy and they're making some great music. Since the gold touch your heart with a dinner roll, shake the spirit one time, it gets old, it gets old. She gon' take me out of space into another zone. Some spirit sheen, with some with confetti hoes. Microwaves and cobalt us out of phone. Smoking LA vibe, smoking good on that drone. Call me Ethan now with the cuz all up in a fro. This queen of pump, she gon' drop it low to the flow. You know she liquid go with the alchemy in the bowl. Trippy super soul, it's the greatest time I've ever told. She gon' get you right, you can set up a point of goals. You gon' spend the night in the harmony, not with your tone. No, she's super fine and I owe her down to her bones So the magic fairy, I'm lost in the ritual woes She give me life like butterflies on the rose Where the rich is old, ain't nothing like cracker trolls Sitting in the clothes, an extra terrestrial And she never fold, drop crackers up in the throat She drink your wine, she rock you up back and pole And she spark my mind with intellectual clothes Shake butter balls and linger up in your nose Independent goddess, I rhythm them up in the soul hey. Yellow honey Drip slow, sweet agave, at the toe. Independent finance, wine, citrus miss. My Wonder Woman, I wonder how to. You guys got to support Jones Five. I mean, let me tell you something about his uh, creations. A lot of his creations are based upon stuff that they discovered in the mounds. Yes, in the mounds. So this brother's out there. Also, I'm on. I'm going to start my uh, research class this week. I hope you uh, guys will come and join me. And uh, so uh, check out my research class. It begins on uh, Tuesday. Afrocentric research course. You will learn how to interpret anthropological, historical, legal, genetic, and other forms of research literature. This is 30 hours of learning how to do qualitative and quantitative research methods. The course begins on April 16th. The class will be taught every Tuesday for 15 weeks. Join Dr. Winters' research class, Afrocentric Research Course. Become a researcher. Guys, interested? Join my research class. Plus, all of these great videos were done by the genius Yoshi Ma. <laughs> you got to check out his productions. Support this brother. This is the genius.
Now, now the genius, Yoshi Ma is a very humble man. He's very humble, but that's just to show you what he can do. He can Thank make you. he can make your stuff look good. He can he can he'll make people want to come out. He'll make people want to uh, subscribe to whatever you're doing. And the point is, this is that give the genius your business. Don't take it over there to the European. He can no. make the artwork. He can make the videos. He can make the music. He can make the music too. You guys got to go to uh, you know, and check it out. Uh, Yoshi, did you, uh, did you want to do your presentation now? Or you want to wait? Yeah, we can. Uh, we can go ahead and knock it out because I know you have a lot. You you can actually input on this, man. Um, I know you will help me out right along with it. And uh, what we're gonna talk about, we broke down soul food. And um, if y'all see any misspelled words, I did this what ten minutes before the show. So bear with me. Let's go. <laughs> don't don't be don't be like one of my former students. I'm not gonna her name, no. but she's always correcting me. He's right. She right. right. I'm gonna fix go. it later. <laughs> Let's go. All right, go to the next slide. <laughs> now, sun food, soul food is sun food. The sun, earth, and the moon, and the sun. We got the three of them, right? So, sun food. So, y'all go out there and y'all gravitate to that sun. Get y'all melanated asses out there. And y'all soak up some of that, that what is that, that uh, vitamin D. Y'all uh, take some of that sun in. Rather, it's going outside on your porch, soaking up just a little bit, or really going out in the sun and really taking your, you know, putting some skin out there. You know, uh, ladies, if y'all go to the beach, you know how I get down. And, and brothers, if y'all go outside, y'all know how y'all get down. Let's go to the next slide. But before we go, I just wanted to mention this is that they just come out. The research is, is becoming very clear now that the, the melanocytes in your skin, in your skin, they're drawing in that energy from the sun. You need that. You need to get that energy from the sun. Yes. You have to go through a process called melanosynthesis. Melanosynthesis means in a sense is that you got the melanin, and it goes through a, a synthesis. And this synthesis, what it does is that it transforms, it transforms that sunlight from raw. It transforms that sunlight and it comes into you and it gets you moving. You get to go. Love it, baby. Love it. Yeah. Ooh. So the sun rise. So all right, so in, in, in voodoo, hoodoo, voodoo, uh, we are taught that uh, when the, before the sun is coming up, you get a big cup of water, right? And you go outside, and when that sun first peek at you, you sip that water, and you drink it in front of you and the creation. And that does something to you. Uh, it's something about the first rays that hit you uh, to your eyesight. That really does something to you. So the sunrise occurred through the earth rotation towards the east. And the earth rotates and the sun appears and to rise in the east and gradually climb higher in the sky. So basically, go out there and, and take heat to that sunrise. There's uh, four phases of this. Let's go to the next phase. So that's that solar noon. And me anybody out there that does videography work. Y'all know about these different phases of the sun. So the solar noon, the sun has reached at its peak and its day arc across the sky. At exact time, solar noon varies throughout the year. And you know what I'm saying? It, hey, y'all just go out there and y'all grab gravitate to some of that solar noon. And that solar noon, it, depending on where you at, may be hot as hell. Go to the next one. <laughs> the golden hour okay so the golden hour this is perfect for when you're uh shooting videos so in this time it feels so great out uh this is when that sun looked like the movie scenes you know where like clear blue skies uh the shadows are just right they're hitting just right like i said if you know anything about videography and photography you will know right here is when you're really eating 
this is when that sun is really allowing you to just eat uh this is part of that soul food soul mind you you come from the solar system so you are part of the solar system remember my b1 folks you have melanin in your skin you have melanin in your body you have the cosmos you have the solar system engraved in your dna and throughout everything that you do the carbon yes that black carbon inside you yeah yeah your hair black carbon yeah 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 your eyes your everything going man come on you know uh, uh you know bringing that up uh yoshi mm -hmm. it's very important because you know doravel doravel is, is a super researcher mm. and, uh, he brought to my attention the fact that 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 when they called us the ethiopes that that mm. really in a sense the ethiopes goes back to what black is and in, in the ancient world black was really black really meant shining so Ooh. we're the shining ones we're the shining ones so 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 whenever you're talking about the ethiope the black face people going out into the sun you know what you're talking about is so true uh yoshi is that because we're the shiny ones when we go out there and we go through that melanosynthesis when that mm. melanin is synthesized Mm. And it comes into your body and gives you your, your energy. That is really what's what's dictating who and what we are. So you're absolutely right. We need that sun. I need it. We all need it. So the blue hour is where the sun is below um, indirect sunlight. It gives them blue wavelengths. Okay. So that right there, you know, it is it's scattered by the sky. And that feels good as well at times. Go to the next slide. But what really feels good, just like the sunrise, you have the sunset. So remember I told you about that 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 kind of energy that you get from the sunrise. I mean, throughout the day you get that you get an energy from it, but that sunrise and that sunset, mind you, anybody else ever want to be with their lover and go to the beach and watch the sun rise? Or you want to go to the beach and watch the sun set? Not many people think it's romantic to go in the middle of the goddamn day and sweat that shiggity out. You know, hey, sometimes it's cool, sometimes it ain't. But that sunrise and sunset does something to you. And when the sun is going down, it gives a, a, a harmonious glow. That light is beautiful at times. You ever seen when the sun is so close up, but it's not even that hot, which is funny, right? So the sun would be like so close up. You see this big old ball in the sky and it's like this. It looked like a Miami uh, video, uh, you know, uh, in Miami where they had that sun looking like orange, red. And it's just hitting that sky so, so pretty. It even lights the clouds up. The sky is a canvas. And whenever you need inspiration and you need to get out of a dark, dark spot in your life, go outside and look up. Look at the clouds. Talk to the sky. You own all of this. You have dominion over all of this. So call out. If there ain't no cloud, call out one. If you want one. If there's too many clouds and you want it to be clear, manifest it. You, you control it. Mm. Sam, you got to listen to what he's saying. Remember back in the day, you know, when you when you went over your grandma's house and she was cooking, she mm. was singing. When when you when you when when your grandma oh. went in the garden, and I know uh, when when your grandma went in the garden, she was singing. So, oh. so in other words, in sense, you got to talk. You got to yes. talk. You got to talk to the world. Use your you words. The environment, like yes. like Yoshi said, you have to give. You have to have the intention for good. And if you have yes. the intention for good, you're going to spread that to the other beings that exist. Oh, dimensional. You're man. Yes, man. Ooh, yes. Girl, you're metaphysical. <sighs> metaphysical, baby. And here we go. Uh, we're going to talk about positive ions versus negative ions. So when we hear the word positive, we're thinking good, right? Just like we, when we hear the word nice, we think nice is good. But as you break down the word nice and go in a dictionary and look a little bit further, nice was actually depicted as something bad. Nice is the opposite. 
And let's go to um, positive ions and negative ions. Positive ions, we don't want that. We don't want positive ions. We want negative ions. Negative ions brings are believed to improve air quality by binding with airborne particles such as dust, pollen, smoke, and allergens, cause them to fall to the ground, thus reducing their presence in the air we breathe. What that is, is let's go to spiritual. So spiritual negative ions, they when it rains, that ion that comes down on you is pureness. Sometimes I know I know it sounds strange of um, what that brother say. Walking in the rain, I feel strange. I forget what he say, but he talk about walking in the rain, right? Um, oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Isaac Hayes, I believe. And um, you walk in that rain, and you ask for the rain to to release and fill you up again. Now I'm not talking about walking no cold rain and go in and catch ammonia. I'm talking about on you know on them cool rainy days, you just go out there for a sec, get a little bit on you, and come in, and um, it feels good. It releases a lot of toxins. Some about that rain, Baba. That makes you feel like, you know, it, a lot. Of, I was trained to, when, whenever it rained, Baba, my grandma used to say, um, go hide or cut the TV off, you go to sleep. Yeah. And in reality, we should have been embracing it. But she heard stories, though, about the lightning striking some of these folks. You know what I'm saying? So she always mentioned these stories about that. But I control the lightning. I control the weather. I control the rain. If you think bad intentions, bad shit is going to happen. And that story is going to be translated to somebody else, like my grandmother, who is going to say, Girl, that happened to you and you cut. Oh, no, I ain't finna. Y'all go to sleep now. I cut everything off. You know? You so, know Rick, uh, yeah. Rick Ramasanji, he hmm. wrote a book and he, he, thought, he talked about, uh, met, he talked about in a sense, uh, you know, uh, fields of, fields of rel relativity. Mm. What Rick Ramasanji said is that whenever it rains, whenever it rains, you have a break in the ozone level, ozone, uh, ozone. When when ozone breaks, in a sense, temporarily during rain, you know, particles, particles Ooh. fall from heaven. Yes, particles fall from God. Yes, yes, yes. See, see, out there, out there in space, that's where God is. Yes. So, then, so you're absolutely right. You know, Yoshi, when you're talking about when you're when you're walking in the rain, you're you're absorbing knowledge and power yes. from 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 the supreme being. You yes. know, a lot of people don't understand is that. You know, a lot of people say, "How do I access the Akasic, the Akasic?" Mm. First of all, you got to be B one. If you come mm. in there talking about you a Nigerian, <laughs> or talking about you a damn uh, separation. A yeah, well, he, separation. They ain't yeah. gonna know what the hell you talking about. No. But if you say I'm B one, I'm black first. Mm -hmm. Remember the Egyptians? They called themselves what? Coming true. <laughs> you know the <laughs> shiny ones. Yes, the shiny ones. ones. The black. You know, and yes. so this is what we had to do. Dor Dorvel, Dorvel has made me have to start to say that instead of us referring to ourselves referring to ourselves as black, we had to use the real definition of black, mm. and the real definition of black is the shiny ones the we're shiny the shiny one. ones and see when see that's what that's what darkness that's what blackness is all about is that you're shining mm, i love that man that's beautiful let's go to the next one i love that and what we got right here tree hugger yeah yeah hug how many of y'all out there ever talk to a tree i do I really do. I asked one of the trees before I climbed it, can I climb it? And then when I did, I asked it what's his name. And the tree, a, a, a plane flew over and it, and it is, and, and the tree moved with the plane. It said, oh, whoosh. I said, oh, shit, that's your name? Oh, whoosh. Okay, cool. What's up? I'm Yoshi. Pleasure to meet you. And I knew we was talking. I knew it. I was grounded. I was one with it. I even like when the, the squirrels get on the tree, 
and they get to eating certain uh, parts of it, they let me know, okay, man, the tree is providing still. It may not show no no, uh, no fruits that I would grab on, but, you know, man, man, the trees, they talk to you. They give, man, trees been here forever. Um, black fruit dangling from the poplar tree. We could go to Billie Holiday, you know. She speaks about the tree, what the tree seen. The the what the tree felt the, the the tree had to go through so much it didn't want to be put in a mix of all that, but it it was put in a mix of it. The tree was here first before anything was around. The goddamn tree was the main one here on Earth. That was the that was the, what they call it the tree of life. Yeah. Right. So the tree. Yeah. You notice know, Europeans, they hate trees. They hate them. They, they don't even they, want the male or the female together, Baba. No tree. They don't want it. They don't no. Want no. They don't want they don't want no trees uh, around here like that. Uh, I think up in uh, Florida, I was told all around they had a bunch of uh, black folks had a bunch of fruit trees, grapefruits. And um the the Europeans went in and they start cutting a lot of them trees down because the um the uh the the companies was losing business the orange companies people weren't drinking they shit so they went out and started they made some up time by yeah some of the trees are affected by uh, johnson yard over here tree affected so we're gonna cut them down over here and they're going yard and cut your tree down cut your fruit because you don't own the mineral rights first of all yeah mineral rights is something we talked about that earlier about it's hard sometimes when you live in these divisions it's hard uh, for you to grow plants and fruits on your yard because you got haters. You got somebody saying, man, what the hell are they doing? That's not that's not in the goddamn contract. Hey, they growing fruit. Cut that out. I go to, uh, I, I shop at Kroger. Who the hell, go, I, I don't want none of that. I, I'd rather pay for it. Nah, man, that's wrong. That's wrong. And, you know, over here in, in Texas, they have these trees that don't produce jack, but pollen, man. Just pollen. Allergies. Everybody around here got allergies. I even start getting allergies. And I notice, damn, what am I around? A whole bunch of pollinated. These trees is producing so much pollen, and they don't have no other opposite sex to pollinate to re. re fertilize the area they not mating these trees are damn near sterile man and they just produce come on all right let's get into it hug a tree god damn it talk to a tree mother man kiss a god darn tree yeah yeah ground yourself baba when last time you grounded yourself baba uh 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 oh, oh yeah what what do you have for lunch uh oh uh -oh. Let me go through this screen real quick. I'm going to take your... Come on, let's go outside. Let's go outside and ground. Put your feet in some dirt. Come on, put your feet in some dirt, y'all. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one of them things right here. This is part of eating. This is your soul food. This is feeding the soul, all right? So, all right, a lot of us, we, yeah, trees have emotions. Yes, yes. Lee Wilson said, it's always, I'm always in the rain, baby. Yeah, yeah. Tons Five said, they cut down all the female trees and leave these dudes out here. I don't want to see no penis, bro. I don't want no penis tree. <laughs> God darn it, I want to see my women, my female trees, the male and the female. They supposed to be mating and having babies. Yeah. So, ground. I go through so much, man, with dealing with the, the artwork and the music and, you know, we, we do a whole bunch. I write the poetry and sometimes I get overwhelmed. I got to go cook. I got to make sure the family is up to par with the family because ain't nothing like putting your soul into some food and nobody don't eat your shit, right? <laughs> so grounding yourself, sometimes I have so much weight on my shoulders, Baba, that I got to go touch a tree. And put my feet in the in, in in the ground. I gotta bury it in some dirt, or I gotta put it in some grass. I gotta wiggle my toes in the grass and the sand. I gotta walk the beach. I gotta let the the seashells uh, eat some of that energy away. I gotta I gotta ground myself 
because I am from the cosmos. I am from the solar system. So I got to reconnect with everything, reconnect with nature because we walk outside on these rubber shoes so much. We watch so much artificial TV. We, we put on an artificial game and we play with the artificial intelligence and everything is artificial, everything artificial, everything artificial. Come on, man. We, I don't know if y'all seen that movie Pod Baby or whatever where they had the baby in a pod and the, it was a, a cage family. So the man was full of cage, right? And uh, he was like uh, 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 sprinkling cage everywhere, you know? And what he did, he was trying to tell his wife you know, because she was white, and he was trying to tell her, he was like, hey, man, um, we need to embrace the plants. You know, you're getting so far to touch. What about the plants? Man, what about nature? And, and what about the dirt? What about the soil? And she was like, man, they ain't nobody into that. You know, they so far in the future, they not even having babies in their stomach. They having babies in a pod. Um, the uh, 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 and the thing is, when they had these babies in these pods, the company owned the pod. So if you were to break open a pod or do something, you're, you're, you're damaging that product. And if you try to conceive the baby earlier than the nine months, then they actually own the pod. They can tell you hell to the no, no, no. Mm -hmm. And that, that was a crucial movie because I can see these, uh, uh, these, uh, these, these creatures doing this. I can see them. But see, that's what that's what uh, that's what they call transhumanism. Ooh, you know, this is all about. See, Damn. that's why they're playing up all the trans. trans. That's, why they, that's why they're playing up that that you can be a trans, and so uh, that you can be a trans if you can be a man or a woman. You know, some of the kids, some of the uh, some of the kids, Damn. you know, they 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 believe that they're animals, and so see what they yep. do is that the transhumanists in the future. They don't want people to, to conceive children and have babies on their own. They no. want to take that over so they can own it. Yes. So they can own that, it. That movie, that movie is not that movie is not bullshit. No, it's not. This is real. That's it's real. Movie. It's called transhumanism. Whew. What they want to do is they want to they want to produce. See, they, that's why that's why that's why everything is aimed at getting rid of the female. Yeah. Getting rid of the woman. See. Mm -hmm. They they want to be the one to 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 they want to get the woman eggs yeah then they want to uh you know put the eggs and then put them in a put them in a test tube and then they get the uh, they get the uh, they can fertilize it and then they can hopefully uh to raise it they act like they're yeah. trying to do that to try to you know help the preemies no they're trying to do that so that they can make it against the law for people to have children yes naturally cabbage yeah, patch kids oh i remember really them yes really God, really what's up sharara insight yeah yeah you said put your feet in some earth not dirt <laughs> yeah that's right my bad <laughs> hey but i do the dirt the earth the the earth worm the dirt all that yeah I, I, yeah but put your feet in some of that um that's that's sad how they they trying to take over the uh the pregnancy they, they trying to eliminate the woman from being a woman Right. Uh, that that sucks because birth is natural and for a woman to go through them pains that's natural because to give life it ain't easy and and when you and when you're going through it with your woman then both of y'all are sharing it and i think that's what makes yes. you come out much happier because, yes you know because you're sharing that experience you know i mean you you land in the bed and your wife got a stomach next to your back and you hey stop that kicking me baby stop. <laughs> baby doing kung fu like, yeah my baby <laughs> or, or you're loving your child you're loving your wife you're loving your woman and i and i think that this is this is very important but they want to these transhumanists these right humanists, they want to move away from that they really do and they want to get rid of the woman period they want to yes there you go they want to get rid of the woman period and um that's why they say period. Yeah, yeah, y'all stop. Yeah, All right. that, that's one of the reasons why a lot of the uh, that's why a lot of the rap the rappers that's why they always spend their time talking about oral sex. Yes. Because if you if you participate in oral sex all the time, yeah, not gonna produce any children. Nope. But then also remember, and this is what happened to Diddy and his and his clan. Mm -hmm. if, you keep, if you keep if you if you if you want your lady to always perform oral sex on you. After a while, you don't care if it's a man performing oral sex. And that's scary. That's it scary. Is. 
But that's what they do. Yeah. You know, that's what they do. Because I heard it. I heard a dude say a, a mouth ain't got no face on it. That's right. I say. I say what? Oh man, I, I gotta stop talking to this knucklehead. Oh no, yeah. this is scary. It is. I, I'm, I'm spooked. This is a Halloween. This, this is real Halloween. They live Halloween every day. Right, and, and and we don't know how how they're doing things to influence our children. There you go. But it seems innocent. It seems innocent. Mm-hmm. Say that that ain't us. That's them. We ain't we yeah, nah, that shit is real deal. Let's go to natural foods. Okay, what is a natural food? Is sugar natural? Is flour natural? Is rice natural? Is oils natural? Hey, is salt natural? What is salt? Let's go to the next clip. We're gonna talk about what the heck is sugar before it was sugar? Okay, so you know, you see right here it says it's naturally formed. You know, you get a sugar from sugar cane, but then what they do, they use bleaching agents. All right, so the bleaching agents, and then they put some carbon filters in it, and then uh, they, they, they want to achieve this whiteness. You see what it says? It says, achieve the white color. So how come the, the sugar was brown, and then they want to turn it white? But do y'all do y'all notice a similarity in sugar, flour, and rice? Right. Did y'all did y'all notice that? Did did do y'all notice that there's a certain color that appears in all of them that is unnatural? Can can, can, can unnatural? Y'all hear me, man? Look, flour. Now, uh, flour is naturally is formed naturally. It comes from milled grains such as wheat, rye, barley. Come on. And what do they do? They put chemicals used to bleach the flour. And they put chlorine gas in it, which make it whiter and softer, they say. Hmm. Ain't that something? And then let's go to rice. Now, rice is natural. It's a natural rice out there. It has many different colors. Brown, red, black. But none of them says white. Okay, look, look, look. let's read. Colors including brown, red, and black. Depending on the variety. All right. But it doesn't say anything about white until... Here we go again. We have a process being uh, handled. The process is polished. With glucose, come on, and and talic, whatever that is, talic. What, what what's that word? Talk. I can't talk. talk. So yeah, they they they're putting these chemicals on it and turning it to a different color. Why? Why do you think they want it white, Yoshi? Man, I was gonna ask you. Why? Why do they want it white? Because see, in the dictionary, what what uh Malcolm X said, Shabazz, brother Shabazz said, in the dictionary, white is pure. It is the the cleanest. It is the closest to heaven, and black and brown ain't nothing, man. That's dark. That's dirty. They compare that to a black cat. They compare us to a, they compare that color to a a, a feline. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But see, that's why it was very important. Mm. That's why it was very important that they changed the definition. Because, like I said, yes, the real definition of black mm. black is what black is fine. Mm. Black they is changed black it. Is white, right? It's, it's a yes. black white because <laughs> you know because when something is burning, when something is burning, it's, it's bright, right? When something is burning, it's mm. it's, it's, it's 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 light. And yes. It's so yes. that's why the innocents had to they had to move you away from from recognizing black as being in a sense representing the shining ones. There you go. You make everything look white because see, white has to be pure. And if your if your bread is pure, mm. your sugar is pure, and your rice mm. is pure, is pure, and 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 they call themselves white. It was a way for them in a sense to try to put white on the brain. Because see, when they put white on the brain, that can help you to 
game what's called CAVES. Yes. Culturally acquired immune deficiency syndrome. And when you catch CAVES, you lose any, you lose your identity. You, 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 you stop being immune to whiteness and you start to believe you're white. And I think that that's why maybe they do this. I don't know, Yoshi. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think we hit the ham on the nail with that one. Yeah, this is a uh, inferiority complex. This is, we're going to embrace this whiteness that we created and put it on every goddamn thing. Let's go to the next slide. These people here, yeah, man. So then we got oils and salt. So oils. Now, what do they do with the oils, right? So... Even oils uh, like vegetable oils, a natural form in their unprocessed state. You know, you can extract it from seeds, nuts, fruits, olives, sunflowers. It has a variety of colors, taste, nutritional content, right? But then what they do, they use bleaching clays that absorb darker colors and an undesirable compound. So they put different things in it. Uh, they add different, they, they take away the impurities, they, they bleach it, they decolorize it, they put unnatural flavors in it, they remove so much from it. So all the, the values that you would get out of a natural oil, that's why Gates is buying up oil. That's why he's doing it. I don't know what's wrong with this guy, man. I, I don't even like to say his name, but this dude is, is creepy, man. You got a bunch of creepazoids out here with money. These people are creepy. They buying up this stuff and then and and have it been paying scientists to fuck it up. Why? Why? You got to be somewhere in you got to be uh creepy and you have to be mentally challenged. I don't care. You could be the richest mentally challenged person in the world. I have met crazy people that act crazy without camera. As soon as you put a camera and a, a somebody pasty in front of them, they act right and fly right. And they say, and the, and the parents say, hey, why you ain't acting crazy in front of them? At least you can get a check. Why you acting all cool in front of them? We know you crazy. Be yourself. Oh. Uh, that's, that's the same thing as this 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 creepazoid that got all his money. A lot of these creeps, a lot of these creeps, the Einsteins, the no I, Einsteins, whatever they names are, with the Rock with the Charles. yeah man, the Rothschilds, all the these people, the, Bez, the Bezos, the Bezos. Let's get them. You know these people right here have bad intentions. They're not helping the planet. They're around here destroying. They're destroying not only black folks. They ain't wor Look, we're, we're caught up in this mix. They're destroying. They went to the animal. This, this is what these creatures did, right? They went to the animals. And in order to get to the black folk, the black community, they had to corrupt the animal. And in order to get to the poor, let's not put color in it. In order to get to the lower class, they had to first affect the animals. They had to run tests on the animals. They had to see if this worked. They gave the animals antibiotics to see if this would happen. And once they tested, say, oh, the animals are cool with it, let's put it to the public. And guess who the first public they're going to target on? The lower class, no matter where you at. But at first, the lower class back then was... They switched our, our status from uh, five thirds to three fifths. And when they did that and gave us the brown paper bag color shit, then that's when they start giving us all this messed up stuff that they've been doing. Yeah. They start giving, they start injecting us with stuff and call themselves doctors. They gave them, they appointed themselves a title. And then created a curriculum around it that didn't even have to do nothing. It had nothing to do with nature. They was doing all this stuff from studies and tests and saying, well, this chemical work, give it to them. First of all, these folks was treating themselves with cocaine and opium. Okay. They was treating themselves with, with dyes and lies and 
Come on, man. These people was killing themselves with all these. They, they was putting cocaine in Coca-Cola. They was giving coke to the workers. They was at, the Asians was stuck on the opium. They was giving the drugs. Man, if you can work, what's your drug? So, uh, heroin make you happy? Can you build this goddamn railroad? Okay, I give family some heroin. Well, what about food? Man, shit, the work that you do from that, you better divide that up with the heroin that you got and sell a little bit. That's how this shit... Come on, man, I'm not stupid. This shit is real. They are affecting us. These people are an infection. I don't know why, but let's go back to the animals. So I know I know a lady at work runs a farm, and she talks about how they um, the vaccine that they had, right? And she said, I, I ain't never took none of that vaccine. And I said, how come? She said, well, shit, it, it go to the animals first. I see what they doing to the animals. She said, now look at look at what they do um, with the uh, artificial foods and the preservatives. She said, nowadays, a dog take a shit, and that shit don't even turn white no more. It stays raw shit. She said, now, think about that. You remember back in the day before all these preservatives was in everything, a dog take a shit the next day, the shit was white. All the nutrients went out, and it went into the ground, and all you had was that dust. And if you step on that dust, it turned a powder, and it's, it's nowhere, right? Nowadays, like she said, they need, they putting so much pesticide and I mean preservatives in these animal products that the animals, their shit is preserved. That's scary. Now think about that, and it's FDA approved, meaning it had to go to the animal first and got approved. Then they gave it to you, and they said, "All right, you can put it in Wendy's." All right, go put it in McDonald's. Go put it in Little Caesars. Go put it in Whataburger. Go put it in Dairy Queen. Go put it in Jack in the Box. Go put it in Burger King. Add this to their um, all of their foods. Um, preservatives in the bread. Put the preservatives here. Put the preservatives in the air. Put the preservatives in your underwear. Put the preservatives in the can. Put the preservatives on the man. Put the preservatives in your hand. And I hope you can do whatever you can. That's why these kids' insides are preserved. They're not even growing no more. At first, they was giving the kids hormones, right? These kids are full of hormones. That was little girls when I was growing up, Baba, already developed at 13 years old. Yeah. That came, <laughs> that came from me. Like my daughter, when my daughter was young, I tried. we tried not to give her a lot of the, uh, the chicken and the beef. Yeah, because the chicken and the beef, we tried to give her as little as possible because they put those growth hormones in. Yeah, and those growth hormones. That's why they. That's why a lot of girls are having their period at eight years old. Yep, overdeveloped. When you, when you start having a period, that make you want to f. Yes. Make you want to have sex. Young so girls. Is, is it any wonder that 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 people are having babies at ten years old, all that type of stuff? Because the thing is, this is that if you if they have an f, the minute you have a period. That means that you're, in a, you're a woman. You're a woman. It's physiologically. Physiologically. I'm not saying mentally, but there's a lot of women out there in their 40s. They're not mentally women, but hey, we ain't going there. No, we ain't going there. But no. again, this is, this, is, uh, this is the truth. And the truth will set you free. Ah, uh, Shay, let's go to the next one. All right, natural foods. Meat is fruit. And vegetables. Is that true, y'all? Do y'all believe meat is a fruit and a vegetable? Do y'all believe that? If you go in the Bible, it says God gave y'all plenty of meat that grow on trees and in the land. That's fruits and vegetables. Go to the next one. So, meat versus flesh. You ready to eat? Meat versus flesh so y'all didn't even do y'all i know y'all knew that meat is the fruit and the flesh is the flesh so when we say man i'm, I'm about to go eat some meat or whatnot well that's fruit that's the the meat of the land right and the flesh you know we have different fleshes that we can eat and some of them we can't eat um go to the next one baba 
our favorite fish in the hood. Everybody know this fish. Every goddamn B1 person has came across this here fish. Have it on Friday. <laughs> come on, fish fry. Come on, fish Friday, baby. Hey, you go to them juke joints, man. They got that fish, the catfish. Come on, man. Fried kick fish. It. Come on, man. Yeah. Kick it, kick it, kick it. Yeah. Catfish often dwell at the bottom of the water bodies. Subotically, this can represent being deeply grounded and having strong foundation, right? Spiritually, it might be encouraged to, uh, and, and encourage a connection to one's root or deepest parts of one's psyche, em emphasizing stability and the depth in one's personal growth journey. So, did y'all know that the um, catfish was a uh, symbol? of grounding and and going the deepest parts of one's psyche we didn't know that but we ate that mother boy that sucker tasted good right man we clean that fish but look dig this you got to go so much to clean that fish this is a bottom dweller right so this fish yeah catfish is the poop fish yeah so catfish is they are nature's way of cleaning up the earth. The same thing with shrimp. I'm not shitting on anybody up, up here in Galveston and over here in Louisiana. You know, get your shrimp, get your crawfish on. But I'm, I'm just throwing the facts out there. These, these specific creatures are here to help clean up the surface on the earth. And if we keep eating them, Ain't nobody going to be around cleaning the bottom of the goddamn oceans. That's why Galveston is so stanky and nasty right now. Because we, I guess we, we eating too much of that goddamn me uh, catfish, baby. Because it, it's only out here in that Gulf, man. Uh, that salt water, baby. So, yeah, the shrimp, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it, it come out here from the, the from the darkest of the oceans, man. Darkest of the oceans, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> so... <laughs> And the shrimp, I know, I love my shrimp, but the shrimp, they eat, they're the bottom feeders, man, them the ones that's eating everything, that darn thing, that's, that's, that's the poops and all that, but um, I ain't gonna get too much on that, cause man, I'm, I'm messing you up, go to the next one. <laughs> cause, I'm, cause we gonna eat that cat. <laughs> all right, a vulture, all right, would you eat a vulture? Uh, no, but you say it's a lot down in Texas. Yeah, they got a lot of them, uh, man. Them vultures be out here, but that they're the air. They're the all right. So if the catfish and the shrimp and the crawfish and the crab and the lobsters are the scavengers of the ocean, then this right here is the equivalent to that. So if you won't eat that. Uh, or, or if you eat them, then you might as well eat a vulture in a sense, because this right here is the garbage truck of the sky. Uh, same like they're the garbage trucks of the sea. So these um, birds right here, um, they would go down and they would clean up the carcasses. So there's a reason for these animals, man. You know, we see these buzzards and they be on the side of the road going hard on some uh, rabbits roadkill possum skunk um they go they go hard out here man and you will see them eating on the side of the road and these um these uh these uh moth backs will ride in their big old trucks and they will intentionally run these vultures over y'all hear me you will catch vultures dead in the street because they're eating roadkill on the side of the road. Now, how do that get hit by a truck? All right. It's because these creatures do not respect the vulture. Vultures were highly respected in ancient Kemet. Associated with motherhood, protection, and royalty. They believe to be vigilant protectors. Both in life and death. FBA, some indigenous tribes viewed vultures as a symbol of purification and renewal. They appreciate they appreciated the bird's role in keeping the environment clean and balanced. Do you, do you think that's it? Do you think that that's the problem with those people? Is they don't they don't like cleanliness and balance? What do you think? 
that sounds about right because they give us all the the bottom dwellers and we make it taste good. I know your catfish tastes good, brother. I be, I probably go over there and eat that catfish and imagine it's a tilapia fillet sitting sideways like the boys in the days. I can dig it, but I also understand that that was intentional, and they gave us that stuff intentional because, man, come on, man, they don't want nothing clean. These these birds out here trying to clean up the mess. These fish out here cleaning up the mess, and they looking at it as flesh and food. I don't know if anybody ever ate a vulture, but I can guarantee it has probably been mixed in with some of this stuff. Who knows? Let's go to the next one, brother. Then we're going to say, I'll see you next time. And I love y'all, and y'all enjoy y'all soul food because the soul food is all about the energy and how you talk to your food, how you talk to your water, how do you talk to your life, your energy. Um, if this is a simulation, then don't you want to give it the right coatings? So if if the water is assimilation you give it the right coding you speak that code into it wherever you believe if it's spiritual you speak good intentions to it if you just that nigga on the block like jenny from the block and you just around here saying say man i, I pray over my food i say amen i say oh you say i'm in raw okay i could dig it brother well then you just gave another blessing on top of that I can dig it. I see where you coming from, home boy, home slice. I can represent that all goddamn me day. I will always talk to my food, my water, my plants. You know, um, I, I not only that, I give thanks. My mama, I used to uh, uh, say grace when I was um, really into the Bible, Baba. And I used to say, you know, God is good. God is great. Thank you for this food. Amen. And my mama say, when you said that grace... Was my name in it? I didn't hear you say my name. I yeah. said, w but I thank Jesus. She said, well, ain't I the one in that kitchen I cooked? Then I go to the grocery store to go buy it. Where was he at? I said, oh, oh, shit. Uh-oh. All right. Well, I start thanking my mother. And I start thanking my wife. I start thanking my son for even accepting this food. I start thanking myself. I start thanking the the animals. I, you know, I start thanking everybody. I gave thanks. I hear people say, "Man, uh, thank you, Yoshi." I said, "Man, give thanks, man. Bro, just give thanks to the Creator, bro. I mean, That's if it, guy, good. Not come good. on, man. Come on, not man." <laughs> Never change, remain the same. My respect for nature and my brain. The Black American experience is the most traumatizing experience that any other human has ever experienced. ETSS, RBT, SIV, B68HF, and RBF. Racial battle fatigue. How many times was my family will be? Cause they can't see us. Slaughter us on camera, and offer us help. And I see us saying, Master, help. Imposter syndrome, dead nature's They down. never wanted the me, just wanted our wealth. Lazy, pathetic, inbred. Criminals, murderers, half dead. Straight out the ice age. On another masquerade. With one purpose to divide and conquer. Most of us come from a sunken place. Shadow work will return us back in shape. Now they still the best And I upgraded and I remain the best of best Can't keep us from thinking On the cool we let they ship sinking No religion, sex addiction, food addiction, death addiction Substance, self-help addiction Gagoo! 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 You! 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 Said it all! So food! So food! <laughs> Got to come from the creator. You know Got I mean? to. Yeah. I mean, just like back in the day <laughs> when my kids was growing up and yes. me and my wife would have this debate around Christmas. Mm. Are you going to tell them about the little white man with the beard? 
you know, the thing is this is that my mom and them they my mom and them they were smart. My mom and them they said they said they said nigga, uh, you you didn't get none because Santa Claus didn't bring it. There you go. My my mama told me the same thing. When you when you tell your kids that you Santa Claus, the truth. Yeah. Then when they don't get what they want, yeah, you in trouble. Yeah, but you again, in trouble. <laughs> but again, family, I I think that, that that what makes this so beautiful is number one. I hope you guys will go to uh, TikTok and uh, and and check out Yoshi. My on that uh, channel again, Yoshi. Yeah. All right. It's uh, Yoshi eats. Y'all can look me up. Yoshi eats. Yoshi evidence. Yoshi mod. Just type in Yoshi. I'll pop up. Put Yoshi TikTok. I'm there. You know, and so check them out, and I'll get some of the, get some of those uh those good those good cooking those good cooking ideas those good cooking uh uh things that'll make you a better cook and all that type of great <sighs> stuff. And uh, but uh, Yoshi, yo, you know, we got a few more minutes. Did you have any a comment? Oh man, I want to thank you for having me back. Um, it was great to be here with you again, man. You man, you always bring life to this conversation and i want to thank everybody out there um dr gabriel oebo you know for the gij comma j equals zero and the offer fit uh institution offer fit and um i want y'all to really embrace guy good embrace life and hug a tree ground yourself get some sun eat some good food talk to your plants and be one, baby. Be one. Be one. Be one. Yeah. Right now. It's time to wrap everything up, you dig? Mm. Yeah. I hope y'all enjoyed the show. Yo. And Dr. Clyde Winners, huh? Then and now. I really appreciate everybody, all y'all support. Y'all like, subscribe, and share this. You dig it? Yo, you've been invited to the dinner now. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the dinner now. Yeah, Dr. Clyde Winners in the Yoshi Mind. <laughs> Intro, outro to the dinner now. <laughs> we gonna see you so have dinner now. Yeah, raise your head. Why put them down? B1 on that den and I. FBA on that den and I. FBB on that den and I. It's all about unity on that den and I. My indigenous folks on that den and I. All my Africans rise on that den and I. Rise up, rise up on that den and I. And don't forget to subscribe. The Den and I.